I remember like Goa. That was a long time in Goa. I, I, I went for a Goa friend. Point, of we went up to a little village where his aunt had a house. And they, but on the way, I remember always remember on the way we stopped at some other relations of his. We'd come from uh, Penjim and mm. we spent Christmas. And then we stopped so at his relations. So it's a very thing, isn't it? So. Yes. And um, I said I wanted to go and uh, pee. And my host led me up some stairs. He said, you won't be afraid of a pig, this one, you know. I didn't know what he meant. And then I went to pee. And directly I started peeing. I was like, <laughs> and the, the, the pee was running down. The pigs were coming down. I know, I was expecting something a little bit more nourishing. To <laughs> and then we went to the aunt's house. And I was relieved. And the first thing one was given was uh, pork. But, uh, but luckily they, there was an outside lavatory. And they, you know, there weren't any pigs on this spot. Mm. But um, the house was, there were, there were ghosts. There was a woman who used to pass by, apparently, and, they, um, and the aunt said that uh, we must sleep indoors. And we insisted on sleeping out in the veranda. And she locked the doors behind us so we couldn't get into the house because, they, because the lady might come into the house. I, to, I remember yeah, I stayed with a family in Goa, um, down on near one of the beaches, a fishing family, and they sort of let to their big room, and they could all move up the back. You know. And um, I remember going down with one thing, it was after dark, thinking, oh, I'll go for a walk on the beach, and there's a yeah. beautiful cafe, isn't there? Yeah. We can't, I said, why? And I said, well, uh, uh, sea spirits. Yeah. So this is. Um, I mean, they're Portuguese, Catholic, yeah, Indian, exactly. superstitious people. Um, they actually thought these sea sprites were going to come out. Well, the, uh, the sister of the aunt, there was a big space, they lived in the village, there was a big space in front of this house where we slept. And, they, um, and the church bell rang at, I think it was uh, half past five in the morning. But nobody had stirred then. And then it rang again at six o'clock and people would go to their work. You would see the torches going mm. by who came torches right across the thing. But uh, the aunt's sister had got a mango tree in her garden and there had been a high wind and the mangoes had fallen off a tree. And she was afraid that they, they'd be stolen. And so, because you were not supposed to get up at the first church bell, not go outside until the second church bell went. Well, you got the old clear. Sort of and thing. yes, and she went out to gather her mangoes, and she was taken by the ghosts. And she was put up on this seashore, she was put up a tree on the seashore, and they had to be rescued by the fishermen when they came. <laughs> this is, I, had a, I was given a similar story, it's like this man's uncle, one would yes. come down along the beach. Um, uh, explained that he, he was delivered up on the beach by the uh, sea sprayers. And the reason they knew this was that he was clogged with sand from his mouth, <laughs> to his rectum, all inside yes. was full of sand. And I thought this could just had something to do with the action of the sea, but they thought he'd been filled up yes. by his, and it would, you know, if he just drowned in the normal way, he wouldn't yes. have been clogged with sand. Yes. Strange thought, somebody filled yes. up with sand. Yes. Uh, but um, they were quite convinced. And this, uh, this festival of um, Diwali, which is like their Christmas time, I suppose. I think it's, it's a Hindu festival, but all the Catholics participate in it and go and you just clatter around, driving spirits away, you make a big yeah. noise all through the night. All the if you see a pig after dark, it's a spirit, I think, too. Is it? it? I didn't know that. Oh, uh, yes. So perhaps we can't use the loo after sundown. Kids <laughs> 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 never appear again. But I did like it. I, the first time I ever saw a dead body was there. The man next door died. Because I was living in the house, even though I wasn't known in any sense. I was obliged by etiquette to go and see him all stretched out. And he had coloured light bulbs all around him. And, you know, and sort, of, yes. sort of big, not even dainty, very light, sort of yes. big coloured light bulbs, all green and red and blue. <laughs> and there he was, being dead about it. So six thousand people coming from a long way away. Yes. I guess he'd be buried the following morning. <laughs> and his family were there. They'd done their screaming. They yes. screamed and wailed for about so I thought, through, way, yes. through one night. And 
but I won't see him next day. <laughs> it's, it's strange, but I said, well, I'd rather not see him. He said, oh, well, you're staying here, you really should. And I suddenly re realized yeah. that it would be the most extraordinary insult not to go along, yeah. I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did, I was living there for three months, I was terribly addicted. I got into a rhythm, which I found very attractive, even though I knew I was escaping from really yeah. fundamental problems of my career and life and whatever you like. Uh, but and also it's so cheap to live there. One, you do get on this wheel of... Yes. I was wheel. only there for two weeks. And I, but we, we, our rhythm was to go down at about nine o'clock, about eight, half past eight in the morning to the seashore. There's no village. I mean, the village was right across the, the, the grass, and they, but the seashore was the other way. Where was this in going? Uh, I can't remember the name of the village. But uh, we used to take some Indian gin and uh, squeeze limes in, and between eight and... Blue ribbon, wasn't it? Was something like that, yeah. and between uh, about half past eight and half past nine in the morning, we drank gin and lime, mm. and, uh, and then it became too hot to stay. Yes, and it's funny, when you live in that environment, which is uh, it's sort of gently sensual and, and intuitive, yeah. rather than logical yeah, and yes. mathematical, it doesn't matter if you're drunk in the morning, because no. you're not called upon to... Yes. Do to do the sort of things which will expose yeah. you and make you yeah. to fail. <laughs> yes. Whereas in London at 9 o'clock in the morning, you've got to have all your wits about you in order to simply get there. Okay. My poor Guyanese friend had lost his wife, who had... Um, they lived in Bombay, and uh, her sari had caught fire mm. on a stove, and she'd been burnt to death. Oh, and they, um,